Q1. Hey everybody, Glenn from the Thrive After 50. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. As you can see, I'm back up in Michigan with Fleece on and the whole shebang here. And uh, I want to apologize for last week having to cancel out. I had gotten a new uh, piece of equipment, uh, um, a router modem combination and man it just wouldn't hook up and spent hours and hours trying to get that fixed so anyway i i apologize but uh anyway thank you for taking the time out uh from your busy schedules tonight again um i'm glenn from thrive after 50 and what i do is i promote bold vibrant passionate living and that's what i'm about that's what i try to live and that's what i try to teach and encourage others to do as well here again i think this uh uh point of life here after our regular career is just a gift a true gift here and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit about that tonight uh the the, the topic is uh, you know aging with vitality five uh, vital strategies that you need to master in order to really get you uh, the vitality that you want out of life here and then we'll get into this here but you know and let me ask you first you know what is vit uh, vitality you know most of us know what energy is uh, but vitality you know how how do you get more of it is it something that um, is, is just there inside of us or is it something that we can build and use kind of like you know energy we, we all know how to create energy but creating vitality is just just a whole different thing here so we're going to take a little gander a little go into a little depth here um, i do want to say that i'm going to be uh, this saturday doing a seven hour retreat and it's going to be a, a, an aging with vitality here so as much as i'd like to go into great depth here with all this stuff i'm going to have to keep some of this stuff uh, somewhat shallow or not as in a uh, great depth, but you'll still get a lot of value out of this, I, I believe there. So anyway, um, you know, I think we all can agree that vitality just sounds like a really great thing to have. Uh, you know, um, I don't think it's really something that you can find in a, um, a sports drink or a heavily caffeinated beverage or something. It's, it's not something you buy off, off the shelves here anything like that it's it's really um you know what is it is it something just from within that it's kind of amorphous and hard to put your finger on you know what is vitality uh, most of us think of vitality as being you know having to dealing with the gym and exercise classes and spas and but that's that's pretty much the eastern way of thinking of vitality as well but you know, I, I believe vitality is so much more than just the physical aspect. The physical aspect is certainly one of the five aspects, and, and we'll talk about that as we get into it. But um, I think we can all agree that vitality is something that we really want more of it in our life if we can get it there. So my question is, how do you go about doing that? What do you have to do? You know, how can you get more of it? Um, you know, and I think we've all experienced vitality, so I think we have a, a little bit of an in, a feel for what that is. You know, um, for example, if you're ever walking along a beach at sunset and you just see a beautiful um, afterglow or something reflecting off the waves, I've got a picture that just exemplifies that to, to the ninth degree here. Um, that is just... Um, Wow, just the feeling that I had, the, the transcendence, the the connection with the earth, with with everything was just, I mean, that was, I was feeling so vital and it was just encompassed more than just my physical being. It was mental, it was you know, spiritual, it was, oh man, it just, I mean, I actually, in this particular one, I got down on my knees and started crying. I was so uh, taken away by the view that I saw there. Um, or if you ever walk through old growth forests or something, um, you know, just the feel, the essence that you get from some of these trees and stuff, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if these trees could talk and share, you know, what kind of stories they'd have to sell, to tell us, you know, that, that'd be really, really interesting. Or for example, if, you know, I'm sure we've all seen those uh, smiling, sassy dancers out on the floor, just kind of kicking up their heels and having the time of the life. I mean, they are just feeling vital 
vital as can be at the at those times doing that that sort of thing there or you know that exuberant gardener that just can't wait to show you their her backyard that's in full bloom or something like that i mean that that's vital i once came across an old um um roadside stand well it was actually a little workshop that this guy had and i turned around came back because it looked kind of interesting went in there and this guy had nothing but lures that he made and ducks and carvings and, and things like this and it was so exciting the guy was just so enthusiastic about everything that he had in there and he had a story with every every little thing in there you know i mean that guy was being vital at that time just just living it up there no doubt about it there so we've all had our, our moments of vitality and we've also uh, on the other hand had our experiences of not being vital as well you know i <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm sure i'm not the only one at times who has uh thought that man the last thing i want to do is get out of this chair and, and get up and do something and if someone's harping on me it's even harder to get up at times where i just refuse to but to you know turn on you know many of us may, may choose to just turn on the tv and veg and eat and you know um you know when we get depressed or something and, and down and out and and um I, th I think we've all experienced that sort of being out of touch with our vitality as well so you know like i said physical is just one of the many ways to do it here to to be in touch with your vitality you know you, you think about it i mean i remember from school who was a ponce de, de leon the uh the explorer that came over to the u.s looking for the fountain of youth i mean how long have has legend and stuff been people have been looking for that perfect elixir or thing that you can drink that's going to keep you young forever and reverse the aging you know i remember a, a twilight zone episode one time, one time and i'm sure most of you remember that where it was just an old couple who had been ravaged with disease and they were just totally depressed and long story short they made a deal with the devil to get their vitality back and and everything they wanted in exchange for their souls well as you might guess with any rod serling twilight zone it didn't quite work out the way they wanted it to but it just goes to show you how uh, extensive or how important it is for for people to want that vitality and want that health to to, um, to feel good to feel good so you know and like I talked about earlier, physical exercise, I mean, that is, that is certainly one of it, one, one of the aspects, one of the five aspects I'm going to be talking about. But then again, you know, I know people who indulge too much in physical exercise that are just nonstop. I mean, that, that's pretty much their lives and they almost use it as a fix to feel better. So just that in itself is telling me that there's something else going on that they're combating that is is tugging on their hearts and souls here to some extent and they're just using this as a fix you know so just because someone may look very physically fit and vital or physically fit doesn't mean that they are vital as well because there's the head there's the the spirit there's the the social ability of it the intellectual there's many different aspects of that i mean how, how many of us have, have known or heard of actors, you know, look at Robin Williams uh, for, for one here that uh, committed suicide and some, you know, you would think this, this person had everything. I mean, and there, there's just all kinds of people that have committed suicide and, and done crazy things like that because they, they weren't f feeling good or having it feeling complete or whole, you know. Um, so, like I said, I mentioned uh, the Western societies, you know, where we pretty much have equated health with physical vitality, with physical energy there and power, you know, you, you know, we were kind of brought up with thinking of gym classes, yoga classes, spas, things like that, that I said. And, you know, it, it's also actually true that many doctors, I mean, if, if you have the absence of something, if you don't have high blood pressure if you don't have clogged arteries if you don't have copd if you don't have um, cancer you're healthy 
Well, that's not true too. That's not true either there. So we kind of have a limited way of looking at it there. You know, the Eastern cultures and endemic tribes, they kind of uh, see it as a revered life force that flows and permeates through not only us, but all things, you know? And um, I think that might be a little bit closer as far as I'm concerned as to what vitality um, is and, and I'll, I'll I'll share what my definition is down there. Shamanist tr tr tribes, you know, they uh, think it's you know the sustainable self that emerges, which you know is a result of healing in relationships, healing in your relationships with 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 neighbors, with your friends, with your environment, with yourself, you know, and that's a really really important one. So, you know, community. So there's just all kinds of ideas of what vitality is. Even the marketers and large corporations, they don't know. I mean, believe me, if, if they could define vitality, the drinks and beverages and snacks would be out there saying, you know, these give you vitality, but even they can't define what vitality really is. You know, give them time and they'll probably come up with their own uh, definition and call it vital, but, but they, they haven't done, done that yet. Well, anyway, um, vitality, from my experience and all my research, vitality is our life force energy that emanates from the source of our being. You know, it's abstract yet perceptible. Um, this life force energy is an expression of our inner strength, our resilience, and our joy for life. And I'll read that one more time. This is what I believe vitality to be. Vitality is our life force energy that emanates from the source of our being. Abstract yet perceptible, this life force energy is an expression of our inner strength, resilience, and joy for life. You know, and, and in other words of, of, of saying that, if I kind of paraphrase that, I've gotten this down. Vitality is an expression of our internal source energy that originates and radiates from within us. It, it, it exists without structure or form. Yet we know it exists because we can detect and feel its presence in stirrings within us. Its intensity is dependent upon our own internal fearlessness and our ability to recover readily from adversity and from our own degree of gratitude and appreciation we have for wonder and the gift of life. And I think that's a pretty cool definition myself. I really, really like that one. Well, anyway, I have my own story about, you know, vitality i guess or I, I didn't know that's what it was at that time it was it was kind of my search for my my truth my purpose my reason for being here on earth you know um you know after i fulfilled my obligation as to what i felt as a father to my children you know raising them getting them through college and out on their own i i considered my job to be done there um, I had been in a business that uh, I was asked to come in, into. I was third party restaurant here and uh, um, third generation restaurant here, I should say. And um, I went back to help for one year out of duty. And, you know, like I said, 31 years later, I broke off halfway, but I still was in that business and I had to get out of it because it was just eating my soul and consuming me so i did that i did a lot of changes in my life there and i thought i'd be a photographer because i love photography but that didn't work out the way i hoped and it was i was kind of like um you know a rudderless ship out to sea didn't even know which way land was or you know at, at one point in my life there it was a very difficult thing but i knew that finding who out who i was and what i was about and what i was put here on this earth was the most important thing I could do. And I was willing to sacrifice everything to find that out. My finances, my marriage of 34 years went down the drain. Um, my businesses I got out of, and I just set off. And this was probably seven, eight years ago or so. And believe me, those first couple of years were really, really tough. But I'll tell you, that's part of the journey, though. That's part of the journey of discovering who you are. That's that's kind of like stepping over the edge into the darkness and not knowing if you're going to land or fly sort of thing. And, you know, 
I ended up flying. I ended up flying, but it's taken a long time, and I still am in that process. But I'll tell you, it's been absolutely life-changing to do this. Absolutely life-changing. And one thing I know I am not going to have to deal with later is regret down the road that I didn't at least try, you know. Even if I failed, at least I tried. And even if I failed, I would have kept getting back up. And I failed many times, believe me. But I kept getting back up, you know. So anyway, here I am today doing this sort of stuff. And I've, I've got, um, you know, a, a number of other things similar all, all along the same lines of helping people and growing and, you know, going on as well here. So anyway, it's been a good thing for me there. And I, I encourage you to maybe take a look at your life and consider risking as well yourself. You know, kind of the old world way of looking at retirement was that this was, you know, kind of this magic, uh, you know, golden day, you know, that we're all working towards to be able to retire and, 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 and do what you want and kick up your heels and go golf, travel, do all those things you've, you've always wanted to do. And, and I encourage you to do that. Take a few gap years, do everything, you know, knock all those things off your bucket list that you want to do. Uh, enjoy life to your fullest. But it's been my experience that with time, you're going to want more, you know, especially when you consider now that we're living longer. I mean, if you, you know, hit 55, 65 years old and you retire, and can, you know, you might have another 30 years plus to live, you know. it. Um, you you got to be finding something. You got to be reaching and growing towards something, and that's that's part of the vitality. There is keeping yourself busy. That that um, day of retirement doesn't mean that you just stop growing. You know, it doesn't. That, that's one of the worst things you can possibly do for yourself. So, you know, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself there. Um, you know, and also when we retire, we lose our identities, especially corporate people who have had titles and stuff that had people who looked up to them and had to answer to them, so on and so forth. You know, when you lose that title, you lose your identity to some extent. You lose your friends at work. Then you come home and, you know, to, to your spouse here and you discover that you both have been leaving separate lives for so long and you come back and Wow. And in some cases, you find really don't like each other anymore. You don't even know who each other is there. And, you know, for a man to come home and start organizing the house and going through all the cupboards, and you know, it's just, that, that's trouble. You don't want to be doing something like that. So, um, but, you know, we're also thought of, well, at least I know in the past, when I was a kid, I would think of older people as, kind of burdens i mean i mean they're on their way out they're they're slowly dying they're you know i think this has just changed so much nowadays but i i just remember some of the people who used to babysit me when i was a kid there and I, you know they look half dead there at, at times and you know sitting there knitting and even kind of smelled like an old person there at times but <laughs> i know that's not fair but there's more than life i believe than plain bingo which is something my grandmother did um just going to church i mean church is fine but if, if that becomes all your life there and what your life's about and volunteering i mean that that's really really good stuff there but i just believe there's other levels and deeper levels that we can um, go and, and experience there and a lot of us associate getting old with pain with um, losing our health here and that doesn't have to be the case either I mean, I work in a, a health and wellness center where there are just so many people that, you know, 50, 60, 70, even 80 year olds that are just hitting it hard there, man. And, and showing up and, you know, the five days a week and just, wow, really going at it. I mean, it just impressive as the heck out of me. And there, there are some of these people at five o'clock in the morning, right? You know, every day go, ready to go at it there. So it, it doesn't have to be a, a death sentence. It really doesn't, you know. I think, of, I think the new world way of looking at retirement is that this is an opportunity, okay? You've done your career. You're over, you're, you're, you're starting it down a new avenue. Try to figure out what that's going to be. This is going to be your vocation. This is going to be your life's work that you want to do. You know, ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What do you really like? What 
injustices really piss you off? I mean, what angers you? I mean, you're going to find some clues here as to, you know, what is it that you can do that will help move others forward, your community forward, yourself forward, or whatever it is there. It's time for us to get involved. It's time for us not to be standbys and just figure someone else is going to do it. Um, some technology is going to, going to happen that's going to solve all of our problems. No, we can't do that. It's up to us. Each one of us is a part of the puzzle here. Each one of us is. We were born with gifts here. It's time. This is the time when we find out what those gifts are and we start building on those things. Okay? So listen to me. <laughs> listen to me that. This is when you find kind of what your purpose and your mission was, is, you know. There, there's uh, studies that, you know, our, our creativeness uh, even gets greater in retirement. I mean, suddenly we're not having to worry about work or kids or some of the day-to-day -day, um, crap that we've, we've had to in the past. And, and now you can sit back and start letting that creative mind work. Uh, there's, there's a research scientist, a, a late researcher named Gene Cohen, who did a, just all kinds of studies on creativity. And he came to the conclusion that creativity is, is like a child learning to read, you know, that it's a stage that when you are ready for it, it'll happen. It'll just come. Sometimes, you know, one child may uh, learn to read earlier than others, you know, but the important thing is to start keep down, down that path, keep stepping down that path, keep, keep trying to figure out, you know, what it is that you want to do. Take it from 180 degrees, you know, of what the possibilities are down to 90, down to, to 30, to, to 15, and, and Keep trying to get that angle of possibilities down there. You know, my suggestion to you is come up with three things, three things that you're really passionate and loving in your life there and start saying no to everything else. Okay. Start saying no to everything else. Or else you're going to get too darn spread out. But find those three things, discover what they are and start working towards those. And this will, this will be something that will take you the rest of your life. Okay. Is something that you can get sink your, your, your teeth in, get excited about, work towards. It's not something you do overnight or you take or finish in a month or something. This is a lifelong endeavor. And that's what I encourage each and every person to do here. Okay, is to get involved in something like that. Well, anyway, without going into too much depth about the the, the solutions, the five solutions or ways to, to bring in more valid vitality, the strategies that you need to master, you know. Um, well, let me just, just start down there. But remember, that wisdom that we have cannot be forced, okay? This is something, you know, our creativity, this wisdom, this is something that we've taken a lifetime to gather and, and bring into us. And now it's time to figure out how to share back, give back there. And it will happen. It will happen. But you got to start. Anyway, the um, five uh, strategies to master is the physical, is the first one. Okay. And I've talked about that a, a, a bit. It's, it's primarily movement. Okay. Um, I see so many people that are in pain uh, that can't do some of the simple things. Um, like I'll ask many of you, how many can spread your legs, keep your legs perfectly straight and lock your knees, you know, lock them straight and then bend over. You know, you don't have to touch your toes, but just run your hands down your thighs. There, a lot of people can't do that. You know, it, it just, or bending their arms over the head or just different things there. I'm amazed how inflexible and the range of motion, how, how rusty people have gotten. You know, in my opinion, a lot of these people have sacrificed their health for making money or for comfort, you know, and, and now they're getting to the point where it's coming back and, and, and beating on them and, and um, you know, they're hurting. But there's also other physical aspects there, too, you know, getting outside, you know, you get outside. I mean, the, the earth is a huge source of our, our vitality, you know, walking on grass barefoot being out in that old growth forest or out, out hiking um, and, and feeling just that essence, that 
being in the, in the wide open spaces there and having all that air and space around you, you know, having sunlight come down on you, um, you know, the, the earth is, it's got its own little generator there. It is generating vitality just as the sun is. We have radiation coming down on us all the time. Light, you know, the air that we breathe, you know, the water that we drink, you know, it's important to get outside and, ex and have that experience there. You know, and, and as well as sleeping, you know, and, and drinking enough water. You know, absolutely. The second one is emotional vitality. You know, this to me is one that I think a lot of people really have a hard time uh, um, accepting or really um, understanding and practicing. This to me is kind of like your view on life, how you look at life, you know. What, when things, bad things seem to happen, you know, what do you say about this? You know, are, are you blaming someone? You know, God is, is, is doing this to me or someone else is doing this to me. You know, what do you make up about that? Okay. And I guess my question is, you know, I, I ask myself, what can be great about this, even though it may not appear to right now? But that's a good question to ask yourself. What could be great about this? And it helps you shift. It helps you shift. You know, we need to accept responsibilities for our actions and, and, and things that we do. That's a big part of emotional intelligence and vitality as well, is taking responsibility for ourselves here. But, um, you know, asking, you know, and, and that also causes you to be present, okay? I know a lot of people who have a very difficult time being in the moment. That is not a very easy thing to do. Either we're thinking about the past, we're worrying about the future, or you know, we're indulged in something, screens a lot of the time here, whether it be our cell phone, our computers, our televisions, you know, whatever, you know, Game Boys. Um, we are not really present and aware of what is going on around us there. So, you know, that that is uh, really a, a great one, you know. Um, Great thing to keep in mind to try to be present there. Then there's intellectual, the third one, um, the, the strategy to master's intellectual vitality, continuous and lifelong growth. Okay, keep challenging yourself, keep growing, keep applying yourself to learn more and more. You like something, like I said, pick three, go deep into them, go deep into them, and figure out what those are. The fourth one is social in our relationships. You know, um, your relationship with your partner, your relationship you have with friends, with neighbors, with community, with yourself, you know, the, the relationship you have with yourself. I mean, how can you ever learn to be vulnerable and trust someone if you can't do that yourself? You know, how would you expect someone else to do that to, to you? You can't go into depth there if, if you're thinking of yourself as not being enough or not having something to share or you're hiding who you are, you know, you got to let yourself use your voice, speak up, be who you are. Okay. You have nothing to be ashamed about. You really don't. Okay. Um, speak up, speak up for what you believe in. Okay. And reach out to other people, even those people that you may not of in the past are there. I've, I've kind of made a point a little bit of that in the wellness center where I work to reach out and start talking to people that I might not have otherwise, that it doesn't seem like anyone talks to. Well, I'm going to go up and talk to them and find out a little bit about them. So, so social, you know, social is, is really important. And when you think about social, we've been kind of trained to think about the I and the me, you know, particularly during our career, as opposed to the we and us. You know, so this is a, a another one of those great things about retirement where you can start doing that we and us sort of thing and, and giving back. The, the fifth one is spiritual vitality. And, and this one I think is really, really important too, because this is where you really start believing in yourself and believing that you do have gifts and that you do have something that you are worthwhile, that you do have something to give back to others, and that you do have a greater power that's working with you to make this happen. And I'll tell you, once you start down this path, the synchronicities, the, the things that happen in your life, the miracles, as you might call them, you know, that, that higher universe all work starts working with us and things start happening 
They really do. And I can attest to that. So please do not be afraid to, to go down that path here. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here because, again, I could keep on going on here. But there's three things that I want you to do, okay, to, to really start trying to do here, to, to really step into your vitality here. One is to challenge yourself, okay? Challenge yourself continuously. Challenge yourself to read. Challenge yourself to get movement every you know five days or more in your life here. Challenge yourself to, to be more social. Challenge yourself to to really develop that connection with that God or that higher spirit, what the universe, whatever you want to call it there. Challenge yourself to look at things in a different manner. Challenge yourself. The second one is is I want you to consider rewiring yourself. And what I mean by that is by, I want you to start rethinking, redesigning, and repurposing your life, okay? Re start rethinking about your life. Who, who are you? What is it that you want in your life? Where, do you, where would you like to go if you could go anywhere? Again, you've got 20, 30 more years to do. What is it that you want to do with that time? And start really thinking and, and develop that vision as to what that would be. Redesign, you know? How do you want to do this? Where, where and when are you going to do this? Um, how do you want to develop this? What is it, how is it that you're going to reach, a, extend a hand back and help other people there? So that is, you know, kind, I kind of call that altogether re rewiring. And then that um, last part is um, repurposing yourself here, you know. That to me is kind of taking action. That's the action. Put things into play here. Once you think it through there and come up with a design and a, a strategy and then put it into play here and start repurposing yourself and start stepping into those shoes of who you want to be. Okay. And the last one is embracing joy. Okay. This one is incredibly important here because this is the one that feeds the soul. This is the one that oh, makes you feel so good. This is, this is your, your gratitude. This you know, makes your gratitude meter go up. This is the one that, yeah, like I said, feeds your soul. It comes from the heart. You're knowing that you're doing something. You know you're in alignment. You know that you know, everything is, is going well here. You're not letting fear hold you back anymore. You're, you're stepping forward, continually stepping forward. So embrace that joy. Embrace that joy. You know, this is the fountain of youth, okay? This vitality, if you practice that physical, emotional, intellectual, social, and spiritual things, start focusing your attention on those things. This will be your fountain of youth. You will find these latter years, this new way of looking at retirement to be incredibly fulfilling and successful and you're going to just oh it's going to make such a difference in your life i can vouch for that it certainly has changed it has changed my life and it will change yours okay well i'm going to call it up um i've got a mantra and i don't know if you guys know what a mantra is but it's a powerful phrase or statement that uh, if you said it over and over it will make you feel better and um and make an impact on you and I have one that I want to share with you that I think is just incredibly wonderful there. And it's called, and it's, this one I say a lot to myself, it's, use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use me for a purpose greater than myself. I'll say that again. Use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I want to be, and what I can do, and use me for a purpose greater than myself. You know what I really like about that is that use me, God. Show me how to take who I am, who I already am. I don't have to try to be someone that I'm not or pretend to be someone else, someone different. Okay, This is who I am. This is accepting my gifts, loving myself enough to who I am, who I want to be, using my imagination. Okay, what can I do? What is it that I really would like to do, make an impact, live a fulfilling life? How can I help others? You know? Um, who I wish to be, okay, and, and what I can do. <laughs> who I wish to be, okay, and, and what I can do, what I can already do. It's not what I 
got to do down the road and use me for a purpose greater than myself. I really like that because that is not just about me. That's about everyone. So anyway, Glenn Thrive After 50, please share this if you find this to be useful anyway uh, with other people there. I really appreciate your coming. Um, uh, like I said, spending your Monday night here uh, listening to me here. I appreciate that. And I wish you nothing but the best and go for that vitality, everyone. Glenn, signing out. Bye-bye.